Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. So today we're gonna to be talking about Audrey Kitching. Now, before I get into who she is and what she has allegedly done according to this article that I was sent, I'm gonna get a drink from my fridge over here. So New Air sent me this 126 can fridge. This is not sponsored, they just asked me to review it. As you guys know, I'm filming all of the time, I'm studying all the time and having a fridge by me is super helpful. Up here you can see that you have a light and then you can also also adjust how cold you want the fridge to be. I had this for over two weeks before I said anything because I wanted to make sure that everything was going fine. I recommend it if you're interested in having a fridge in your room or office. So as you can see in this picture, you can customize the shelves and how you put your cans in them if you want bottles. So that's also cool. I definitely recommend this. Check out the link in my description if you're interested. Okay, so the article in question is very long. I will link it down below. I'm only gonna talk about the things that I deem the most most important to know. Okay, so this article from the Daily Dot is titled, Audrey Kitching is a MySpace queen turned energy healer. Critics say she's also a fraud. So if you don't know who Audrey Kitching is, Audrey Kitching is a blogger who came to fame on MySpace and has maintained fame, though she used to be more of a scene queen and now is more of a pastel spiritual healer type Instagram influencer. She also has an online store called Crystal Cactus, which fun fact, I bought from when I think I was a freshman in college. Based on our Wikipedia, Audrey Lynn Kitching is an American fashion blogger, model, and fashion designer known for her pink hair and Lisa Frank vibe. Kitching has been declared simultaneously a fashion forward female and fashion disaster by Cosmopolitan, an it kid and goddess by Nylon a weekend role model by Glamour. It goes on for ages, we don't need that much description. Hitching has over 250,000 followers on her Instagram. Her Instagram looks like this. A lot of her posts are very aesthetically pleasing, there's a lot of crystals, there's a lot of pink, and they often have captions that are very spiritual. Now, this might be surprising, but I'm actually a bit of a spiritual person. However, I do find that there's a difference between spirituality and mumbo jumbo that people say that sounds nice and profound, but when you think of it, even if it's figurative, even if it's metaphorical, it just makes zero sense. Kitching's posts often are, you know, insightful, and sometimes I'm just kind of like, this doesn't mean jack shit. So that article says her fandom isn't so different from that of your average influencer, and you could say Kitching has tapped into an audience that isn't in short supply. The young, the her hurting those dabbling in spirituality. But unlike other new age social media stars, like astrology favorite Johnny Nicholas, who produces socially conscious analyses, as well as Spotify playlists for each sign, or the other massively popular hood witch who identifies as a modern witch and whose store is accompanied by witch tip blogs, kitching her beliefs and her services as a healer are loosely defined. Even in the unregulated healing industry where creative titles are the norm and it's common to have an arsenal of practices that are diverse and malleable, Kitching's work as a healer is blurry at best. Specifically, Kitching has a history of reaching for and amassing the kind of fame that one gains for not any particular talent other than one for being noticed. How the path led her to where she's landed today, doing spiritual guidance via Instagram, Tumblr, and Twitter, is unclear. Kitching declined the Daily Dot's request for an interview. But what is clear is that her role in her business isn't what she promises it to be and that among the hundreds of thousands of followers her work has racked up, there are at least three women who now cite their relationship with Kitching as abusive, manipulative, and controlling. So one of the big problems and I think one of the most concrete pieces of evidence comes to light with her website called Crystal Cactus. This is what Crystal Cactus looks from the outside. There are a bunch of different different options you can click on from jewelry to lifestyle to crystals candles, so on and so forth, the typical spiritual kind of website. However, there's a lot that does not add up. Kitching is described as the designer for all these goods. According to the site, each item is lovingly made with intention in small batches while embodying the energy to transform, inspire, and heal. In 2015, Urban Outfitters placed orders with Crystal Cactus for oil, sprays, jars of glitter, 
blah blah. So it really seemed like her brand was gonna take off because being in Urban Outfitters would be a significant accomplishment. But on January 19th, a new Instagram account under the username Fraudery Kitching called Kitching Soul Project into question. Several members of the Instagram healing community, mediums, astrologers, and other practitioners tagged the account in their stories advising their followers to check it out for the truth about Audrey Kitching. Screenshots of handcrafted goods appeared in a slideshow along screenshots of identical items on AliExpress, a Chinese retail wholesaler, for small fraction of crystal cactus prices. Here you can see the fairy drop earrings on crystal cactus are $48 and on AliExpress are $3.30. To be noted that if she bought a huge amount of these earrings, they would cost even less than $3.30 because that's usually what happens when you buy wholesale. Then there are other earrings that are $64 on Crystal Cactus and on AliExpress were $9.49, and again, that would be just for one pair. There are also email screenshots of Audrey Kitching connecting with AliExpress. The Daily Doc got these screenshots from a woman called Lauren who used to be employed by Audrey Kitching, so I can't say that they're 100% legit, but I think this is as legit as we're gonna get. Also, since I saw that a little bit of shady stuff was going on with AliExpress, I decided to look into it myself and see if I could find some copies, and alas, I did. So on her website, Audrey Kitching sells these earrings that are divine citrine bee earrings. $64. Interestingly enough, what do we have on AliExpress? The same earrings for $10 to $13. Again, that would be for one piece. So that's shady. Now one thing that I do want to mention though is AliExpress is known to copy brands, right? This is my thinking though. Audrey Kitchen, yes, has a significant following. Do I think that following is big enough for AliExpress to go out of their way to copy it? I don't think so because it's not like Audrey Kitching has a brand comparable to Too Faced where AliExpress, it would make sense for them to copy Too Faced because Too Faced gets a whole lot of orders and is too expensive for certain amounts of people. Audrey Kitching, I don't think people are buying as much as a brand such as Too Faced, so I don't know why AliExpress would go out of their way to make copies of her earrings, especially when the people buying her earrings supposedly would want it to be spiritual and made with love or whatever it is that spiritual people do. I don't think there would just be a market for that, so I really don't think they copied Kitching. This is all allegedly, supposedly, my conspiracy, whatever. Another thing Kitching sells on her website is the Green Aventurine Cat, and that's for $23. On AliExpress, again, I found multiple versions of this, which is an Aventurine Cat statue, and it's $4.99, and to me, looks incredibly similar. I didn't look for more, because two are already bad enough, and I think that two are already indicative that something's up there. <coughs> Pull it together. Damn. So as I said previously, another thing Kitching is famous for is her uplifting quotes, her uplifting captions. So she shares a lot of these on Twitter and on Instagram. But what if I told you that those are in fact not her quotes, but they are plagiarized and she's passing them off as hers? I feel like there's a big misconception on what plagiarism is. Plagiarism has many shapes and forms. It's either passing someone else's work off as your own, but it's also leaving it to be implied that the work is your own. So here, in these tweets, she doesn't say, oh, this is by me. But if you post something and you never disclose, even in the comments, that it's not you who said this, the audience is led to believe that you in fact said this and this is your original thought. This Twitter account called Humasound has been tweeting about this and they're showing examples of where Kitching has a quote with like an aesthetic image. She doesn't credit anyone for that quote, so people just believe it's her, whereas it's actually not her and it's other people who have said this prior and who are just not being credited. Some of Kitching's followers have questioned her on the matter, but upon doing so, they say that they were immediately blocked, which nothing says innocence as just blocking someone rather than answering their questions. Also, I did reach out to Kitching, but she has a lot of followers, so I didn't really expect a reply, but I think I reached out to her over a week at this point, so I don't think I'm ever gonna get a reply at this point. Kind of surprised that I'm not blocked, actually. Previously, I mentioned an assistant of Kitching who came forth with some information. So her name is Lauren Carfagno. So Lauren Carfagno exposed a couple of things where Audrey Kitching again misled interviewers, the audience, whoever really was reading whatever she says. Lauren Carfagno originally was a huge fan of Audrey Kitching and when Audrey Kitching put out uh, a notice that she was looking for an assistant, 
Lauren was over the moon, wanted to join, she eventually obviously got the job. What ended up happening is that essentially Lauren was the entire Crystal Cactus team. When someone has a website and they do interviews where it seems like they're working with a team of people, the obvious implication is that you're not gonna be a one person team. That's not <laughs> what a team is. So Carafaño said that she was essentially the whole team and sometimes a friend of Kitching's mother would show up after her day job and help package orders. As for the energy alchemist herself, both employees said Kitchen was largely absent from the workspace. She spent 85% of her time in her bed or in her bathtub and she would text you or call you if she needed to tell you something. So while Kitchen did not do the hands-on work she claimed on the Crystal Cactus website and in interviews, Carfaño said Kitchen did on occasion take a pair of pliers and attach a cheap crystal pendant which came from bulk shipment to one of many chains she'd purchased on AliExpress. Carfaño had also shared emails with the Daily Dot showing Kitching purchased items from eBay too. She'd say, there, you see that? Make 40 of those. So there was one other person who apparently worked with Audrey Kitching, whose name is La Brea Welliver. Welliver had to write product descriptions on Crystal Cactus. She challenged Kitching on more than one occasion regarding the false marketing on her website. Everything was cheap, bought in bulk from China, and I had a big problem with that, said Welliver. She'd want me to describe a necklace having a sterling silver chain, and then we'd get customer emails saying my chain is black and deteriorating. I'd show Audrey and she'd say, what did they expect for a $35 necklace? Now, I also had an experience with Crystal Cactus, like I said, but I never was a big follower of Audrey Kitching. I didn't really follow her. I didn't even know her from MySpace. I just knew that she had a crystal website. I was really into crystals back then, and I was dumb and believed that they were actually ethically made, blah, blah, blah. But I remember ordering a crystal necklace that looked something like this, just very basic, and it came broken in two. Now, of course, this could be rough handling. This could be, you know, just that it was dropped and that it wasn't handled properly of course, but based on what I'm reading, I'm kind of just thinking it was cheaply made and it snapped in half, not because of rough handling, but because it was crap. Because a regular crystal necklace, like I've had a bunch of them, don't just go like and have the crystal break in half. That's not, no, it's not chalk. So after Welliver was fired, Carafaño said she became her sole studio employee, handling emails, stocking, shipping, packaging, and PR and coordinating photo shoots with makeup artists and photographers, but none of the extra work amounted to a raise. She was making $12 an hour. Carfaño added she was frequently paid late and often only $100 of what she was owed at a time. Kitching allegedly said there simply wasn't enough money in the PayPal account to pay her in full, but within days, Carfaño said she'd witness Kitching using money from PayPal account to purchase clothing for photo shoots or golden swan faucets for her bathtub. She really abused me spiritually, emotionally, and mentally said Carfaño. Despite long hours and poor pay, Carfaño said she never challenged Kitching until a 2016 photo shoot where Kitching allegedly threw clothes at her. In the car ride back, she told Kitching that she didn't appreciate how she was treated. She said Kitching replied, I know what this is. In a past life, I was a queen and you are my servant. So you're reliving this lesson to karmically heal this wound within yourself. It's your own ego, it's not me. Obviously, this is all alleged. Another thing that happened is that there's a private group chat called I Survived Audrey. Carfaño, the assistant, is a member, and then there's also another member called Alex March, who is a professional medium who became friends with Kitching in 2012. So this is interesting. March reached out to Kitching via social media about a deceased relative who was trying to connect with her. The two became close, and at first, Kitching wanted to learn Reiki and encourage March to take her talents public. She gave me confidence, March said of Kitching. But it didn't take long for the friendship to spiral from intimate to controlling, said March. Kitching would allegedly be furious if March spent time with other people, even a boyfriend. March also described Kitching flying into frequent rages. The worst allegedly occurred when March got a taste of fame. March, a Jersey native, had appeared on an episode of Snooki and Wow to give the stars medium readings where she connected them to their deceased loved ones. March said MTV had been impressed with her performance on the show and invited her in for a meeting, but when Kitching found out, she was furious and demanded that March get her a meeting too. According to March, the meeting went poorly. When Kitching was allegedly asked questions, she could answer, she grew frustrated, put on a pair of sunglasses, and refused to speak. Okay, so there's this woman called Mila Starfire, and the, her relationship with Kitching was very similar to March's relationship with Kitching. Before Kitching set up her shop in Crystal Cactus and all that, she was seeking to work in the fashion industry as a model, but mostly she was successful at amassing a MySpace following. Kitching gained visibility because she was dating Panic at the Disco's Brendan Yuri. When Starfire, an energy healer and dancer, signed up for MySpace in 2006, she came across Kitching's profile. I felt like 
I needed to help her, I needed to let her know there was sickness around her. Like March, Starfire reached out to Kitching first with some kind of intuition. Then in 2009, they met in person at the Hello Kitty 35th anniversary party in LA. I gave her her first crystal, says Starfire. I still have the picture of us at a party and she's holding the crystal I gave her. Later on that night, Starfire received a bunch of messages from Kitching and as their friendship progressed, Kitching got very weird and very controlling and she would say that if they didn't get to hang out, Kitching was gonna kill herself. She would actually say she was gonna kill herself if Starfire wasn't available to hang out said day. But above all, both March and Starfire claim Kitching stole pieces of their identities to masquerade as a healer. March went as far as to say Kitching has ripped off her life story. In her 2015 numinous interview, Kitching described her childhood confusion. Growing up, I always thought I was losing my mind and dying. In reality, as a born healer, I've always been able to empath other people's physical alignments as well as their mental vibrations. This is me. She is no empath, said March, who claims that in their private conversations, Kitching openly mocked those who claimed to be empaths. She did not want to help anyone. She wanted money. Starfire felt Kitching was mimicking her style and her teachings without giving due credit. In the past year, Starfire has posted multiple pictures of herself alongside photos of Kitching. To Starfire, the similarities are startling, but to an onlooker, it's hard to say that anyone owns these styles. In one pair of images, the women both wear tribal makeup, pink hair, and sport intricate, purposely messy braids. So. At the bottom of this article, it says that Crystal Cactus's About the Designer page has been edited since they published this article. As I said before, previously it said each item is lovingly made with intention in small batches and now makes references to specific products being handmade and does not include jewelry. All of the Crystal Cactus candles and beauty products are lovingly handmade with intention in small batches while embodying the energy to transform, inspire, and heal. I'll link the article below. I definitely think you should read through it to get a fuller image of everything that's going on. My personal opinion is that I don't like believing just one person's account, not because I don't believe the person, but because people can lie, so I don't like putting all my money on one person. Here to me, the fact that there are multiple people, and I didn't even read about everyone, I just gave you a couple examples, that are claiming that Audrey Kitchen's behavior is controlling, manipulative, definitely toxic, and that she's been lying on her website, and her behavior towards even people outside like the MTV interview to me say that something's wrong. Now, obviously I can't know 100% that all of this is true, but all of these things put together to me scream, some of this has to be true. Like not all of this can just be made up and pulled out of thin air. And what I wonder then is Kitching this huge entire fraud who just decided to embody this persona in order to make money. And on top of this, is she a fraud that doesn't even make her own necklaces or whatever and has other people do all the heavy lifting while she just chills and takes pictures for Instagram. Now obviously I do want to say it is possible for people to change in the sense that it's possible that back in the day she wasn't spiritual and that suddenly something happened. Sometimes just one thing happening can change your entire way of thinking, certainly. The thing that I'm thinking though is that the fact that she edited the information on the website or someone did it for her, clearly it was under her direction, that to me is shady as fuck because if you have nothing to hide, why why are you changing things and why aren't you addressing things? You know what I mean? Like I don't expect people to address everything all the time because they don't owe us shit. But when you're being accused of selling AliExpress jewelry at like a super inflated price and that you're not making your own jewelry and that it's not made with intention and that you're a terrible person, I feel like if I had a business, the least I would do is respond and at least try to prove my innocence in terms of my business practices. It's a lot harder to prove your innocence in terms of toxic behavior, but even in terms of a business standpoint, you'd think that there'd be some kind of, I don't want to call it damage control, but some kind of atonement, right? To just say something, to be like, hey, I might have fucked up in the past, I'm working to improve, whatever, just say something. Because between not responding, between editing the information on the about page, I just feel like there's something amok here. Now, obviously, I don't know Kitching, I can't say anything for certain, but to me, it seems like something is severely off, and to me, this sounds like a person who kind of just thinks they're gonna get away with everything, no matter what, and I really don't support that kind of attitude and that kind of behavior. Anyways guys, let me know what you think. Let me know if you've been following Audrey Kitching since her MySpace days or if you noticed something of off. Let me know. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to my patrons as always. Let's get right into the fan art.